Hey guys, welcome back to Insight Tennis Tour Stroke Series. My name is Rick Oldroyd. I'm the president and founder of Insight Tennis. I'm also the head pro. Uh, we are doing a lot of new things with Insight Tennis uh, right now. Um, as many of you know, I was injured for almost two years. Was unable to post, unable to play, um, but I'm happy to be back on the court. But we do have, uh, a, have had a lot of requests rather uh, to do some training courses uh, some basic fundamental training courses on the biomechanics uh, of the best players in the world and we're doing this with uh, the forehand first which is out now the forehand mastery training course we just finished shooting the two-hand backhand uh, also will be coming out here very shortly and then we'll do the one hand the serve the volley um, footwork return to serve uh, those will all be following uh, shortly after in the coming weeks and months so if you're interested in that, uh, go check it out. I'll go ahead and put the, uh, the link in the bottom of this video and you're more than happy or more than welcome rather to go check that out um, and learn more about it. Uh, love to hear uh, your feedback and, and so forth, but uh, check that out. The link will be there and also on the website at insighttennis.com. So today's video is going to be on the volley. And this is something that I've done a few videos on this, but I wanted to do um, another video to kind of clarify a couple of things and uh, reiterate a couple of things, if you will. First and foremost, it's widely believed and widely taught that you shouldn't swing very much on the volley. Um, now, I do not want you to hear me saying that you can't swing too much on a volley. Of course you can, and that can, and that can, uh, uh, hinder your timing and make you a, a less consistent volleyer. But if you watch the best players in the world, specifically Federer, you're going to see that there is actually quite a lot of swing on his volley. And it's critical uh, to have that swing if you want to really be able to pop the ball like you see uh, the pros uh, so often do. So. What we want to talk about today is what allows them to be able to, to hit the ball like that, okay? Um, you may have been taught that on the volley you want to keep your hands always out in front and never move them from being out in front. Now, the grip on the volley, I, I think that everybody pretty much knows that uh, the continental grip is the uh, most widely recognized and most widely used grip on the volley or the chopper grip if you're in Europe. But the easiest way to find that grip is just bevel number one here, bevel number two, if I put my index knuckle right on bevel number two and the pad of the hand on bevel number two, that's pretty close. And again, there are some variations, but that's what I advocate to start out with is that continental grip. Now, first and foremost, you probably have been taught this, you may have even heard it, that you, know, you want your hands way, way out in front, but if you watch the best players in the world, specifically Federer, you're going to see that his hands are right here. It's nice and relaxed in front of him and that still gives you plenty of time to go ahead and get to the volley on either side. So I advocate the same thing, just nice and relaxed in front of your body. But what the big myth is, is that once, you know, people have been told, you know, get your hands out in front and leave them out in front. Just keep them out here, okay? First of all, I'm disconnected from my body. There's, no, there's nothing there, right? My body is too far away. I can't utilize my body in that stroke. That's the first thing. The second thing is there's just nothing on that shot. If I put my racket out here like this, now obviously if the ball is hit really, really hard at me, I might be able to hit it back a little bit with that type of a swing. But it is not what the best players in the world do. And that's what we want to take a look at uh, you probably heard me say this before, but the best players in the world have access to all the best information, all the best coaching, all the best biomechanics and technique that are out there, and they choose to do it a certain way. To me, that's very, very telling. So my philosophy is I never want your technique to ever hold you back from the type of player you can become. Too often I see at the uh, recreational club levels, players have tremendous potential but they've been taught the wrong technique and they get to a certain point with their game and they just can't get any better and that's something that we never want uh, to have happen to you um, we want to have the solid faith foundation of the uh, biomechanics and technique of the best players in the world and then how good you become is entirely up to you and how hard you're willing to work 
So let's go back to this. Instead of having my hands out here, I want to have my hands just relaxed right here in front of me, okay, with the continental grip. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the take back. When the ball comes, these guys, the best players in the world, Federer specifically, he'll take his racket clear back to here at least almost always on his forehand volley. And that's contrary to popular belief. There's a lot of people who advocate that they're out here and they keep their racket out here. Just go watch the video, guys, and you'll see that it absolutely is not the case. So he's here and he gets that nice, he opens up a little bit, but he still essentially keeps his uh, chest pointing to the uh, net. This is another critical thing, okay? So it comes to this position here, but then as the ball comes, you're gonna see that the racket actually releases back a little bit and then comes down into the ball and through and then back to this ready position, okay? So this little release that you see is a huge power source, okay? This and that, right? And notice also this starts connecting me with my body so that I've got the leverage of my shoulder on that, on that volley. If my hands are out here and they stay out here, there's no leverage there, okay? So again, I'm not saying that you can't hit a volley like that, you can, but it isn't what the best players in the world do. And if you really want that pop on that ball that the best players get, these are the key things, okay? So number one, you're gonna have your hands nice and soft right here and just relaxed here in front of your body. Number two, on the take back, I wanna have the racket come back to about here. And then as I'm stepping into the ball, right? If I have time, I'm gonna step into the ball. I'm gonna release that racket back and come down and make contact out in front, right? So it's gonna be boom, like that. So I'm here, boom. Now, if I don't have time to step into the ball, I can still hit a pretty offensive volley just by making sure I'm releasing that racket back and coming down into that, into that ball. And again, a good follow through, that's another thing. People think, oh, there's no follow through. Absolutely, there's a follow through. But it's not all the way out like this, obviously. But I'm gonna be here, come down, stop about right there, and come back. So that's the forehand volley. The backhand, exactly the same thing. There is a lot of swing in the backhand volley, if you will watch. If you'll watch Federer, you're gonna see that he'll take his racket back to about here, but then as the ball comes, he'll even take it back farther. If he has more time, he'll get it clear back to here and then come down on that ball, right? And notice also that I'm holding that wrist. I do not allow my racket to release like this. Okay, so as I come down, I'm gonna hold that position. I'm gonna hold that wrist in that position. Boom, down like this, okay? If the ball's hit at me harder, then obviously I have less time. So what do I gotta do? I'm gonna only get to maybe about right here, but then I've gotta come through even more because I've gotta generate that pace. Um, if the ball's hit at me harder, I have less time, but I still need to make sure and use the swing. If I just stick my racket out, that's obviously not going to work. So guys, this is the key to popping that ball is this back swing, okay? You've gotta have a swing on the volley. There is a lot more swing on the volley than people realize, okay? And as you get better at that and timing that, you're gonna start really popping that volley and that's exactly what you're looking for. So go out and practice this, try it. If you have any uh, questions or comments, leave any comments or questions below. Email me directly at rickatinsighttennis.com. Uh, um, if you're interested in clinics or help with your game, obviously email me directly at Insight Tennis, rick at insighttennis.com. Hopefully this will be helpful for you guys. As always, thank you so much for your time. We'll see you next time out on the court.